Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining me as we continue to read through the Bible together. We're reading through 2 Corinthians, and actually today we're wrapping it up, chapter 13. So grab your Bible or listen along, and uh, let's read the Word of God together. And as we do so, if we remember back to chapter 12, Paul talked about some important and wonderful things. Um, he talked and began the chapter with the vision of paradise, but then he talks about his thorn in the flesh and really pressing how God told him that his grace is sufficient for him and God's strength is made perfect in weakness. Um, and so that's an important thing for us to hear as well, even in the midst of our afflictions, that we uh, understand and know the work and the grace of God in us by his spirit um, as he is strengthening us and as he is showing himself strong um, in us. And so also he ends the chapter there just talking about his love for the church. And um, I love uh, verse 15 where he says, I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Um, that is real ministry in action there. Uh, that is the love of a pastor towards the people. Uh, to be an under-shepherd of Christ, to truly be a minister who's willing to spend himself um, self-sacrificially, self-sacrificial love for the people, uh, that they would grow in the knowledge and grace of Christ, um, that he would minister effectively to them and point them to Jesus and help them grow in the Lord and the knowledge of his word. So that's a wonderful thing. But uh, let's dive into chapter 13 as Paul once again makes another reference to this being or his upcoming trip, Lord willing, to be his third time with them. Um, and he says he's coming with authority. So hear the word of God now. This will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I have told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time, and now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest, that if I come again, I will not spare, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak towards you, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this also we pray, that you may be made complete. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen and amen. What a wonderful way and wonderful words to end this great epistle to the Corinthian church. Well, again, I hope that you're blessed by the reading of God's word and the truth therein. Pray that the Holy Spirit works and presses these truths deep into your hearts and minds and that you grow closer to the Lord Jesus Christ each and every day. Continue in his word, beloved, and join me again next time as we dive into another book of the Bible, we'll see you then. God bless you.